Welcome everyone to Neverwinter on PC. My name is Reiner and today I will be releasing a full guide on the current version of the Zarials Challenge Trial. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you would like to see more information of this about Neverwinter, hit the subscribe button. Zarials Challenge is the newest and currently most difficult content that will be released to live pretty soon. Of course, it's not in its final form, so if something changes, and I'm pretty sure it's only in the orders of all the mechanics, I will of course make an update on this video. In today's video, I will give you all the information you need to give the trial a good shot, unless your stats don't check out, of course. I will break down the video into a couple of parts. The first part will be all about the basics, like stats, artifacts and mount powers, things like that. In the second part I will explain all of the individual mechanics with all the details and the connections between certain mechanics. In the third and last part I will break down the rotations of all of the phases as well as give you some strategy tips for each phase. Let's start with the stats. I personally always play on a DPS Ranger, but I guarded all the stats for all different roles in this small overview. As you can see in the overview, on a DPS you need at least 500,000 HP. It might be a little bit lower, but then you need to make sure that you don't die and use debuff artifacts at the correct moment. So let's just say 500,000 HP for now. Um, power between 190 and 200k, all potted up um, and in a party. Then armor penetration 90,000, critical strike 90,000, accuracy 90,000 and combat advantage 140,000. And defense should also be kept at 90,000 um, defense. This all because there are some very, very hard hitting mechanics in this trial which you cannot avoid. Then for the healers, I have two different columns because uh, paladins work a little bit different than clerics and warlocks. Um, on a cleric warlock healer, you need uh, also 500,000 HP and 90,000 defense, of course. And there you need um, power and crit for uh, most efficient healing. Uh, and crit should be about 20 to 25 percent more than power so you need to focus a little bit more on crit than power on a paladin you also need the 500,000 hp and the 90,000 defense but here you can focus more on power and only put points into crit when power is not affected this is true because you have critical touch on paladins which can make sure that your um, shield or auto power will always crit, at least when you have it up. Of course, this requires a little bit more skill. Then last but not least, very important also here, uh, tank. Uh, tanks need at least 900,000 HP, uh, 90,000 defense of course, and 95,000 critical avoidance. Then deflect uh, is a secondary stat because you cannot rely on it. But having it um, makes life a little bit easier for the healers. And then to have um, sufficient threat generation, you want to have approximately 120,000 power and 90,000 armor penetration. In this trial, you definitely need at least two tanks. And um, most likely you also need two healers, but the future will tell. The two tanks are definitely always needed. Here you can see the stats that I'm currently running the trial with. Of course, this is outside of a group, so I don't have the Raptor bonus, which will, would add another 8,000 to this power, which would bring me above 200k. And you can see that armor penetration, defense, critical strike is a little bit high. Accuracy and combat advantage are all kept, as well as I have over 500,000 HP. One more thing in the statistics, make sure that this does not go negative. So don't use the rusted iron boots. They're not good anymore in mod 19 uh, because the 25% negative is just too much to handle. 
Critical severity is also very nice to have. I think I'm doing this with the critical severity boon, yes. With the power boon I would have even more. So, now we go to the debuff artifacts. Uh, the debuff artifacts are very important to do this trial as efficiently as possible. And with efficiently as possible I mean do as much as possible damage and being able to debuff the enemy as much as possible in outgoing damage as well. Because once again there are some very very heavy hits in here. There are basically 8 artifacts which you should try to always have in the group. The first one is the Charm of the Serpent, which is a massive 16% damage effectiveness increase. Then the Frozen Storyteller's Journal is a 5% damage effectiveness increase. Hellas's Blast Scepter 15%, Heart of the Black Dragon 6%, Lantern of Revelation 10%, Thirst also 10%, Vanguard Spanner 5% and the Wyvern Venom Co Coat of Knives 12%. The Wyvern Venom Coat of Knives have an additional bonus because uh, apart from the fact that enemies take 12% more damage and thus in an artifact call you do a lot more damage, the enemies also um, deal less damage and this can be very essential on big hits but I will get to that later. Then the mount powers, also very important. Um, again here this is all about uh, debuffing the enemy and buffing the team. Um, for the mount powers you want to have armored griffins in here, one or two, uh, at least one but probably two uh, is very recommended. Then a T-Rex of course for the extra damage boost it's a very good mount power. When the mythic T-Rex appears, maybe you want to have one more. And then uh, the rest of the team should all take swarms. One more mount power that you can bring in if you don't have any of the others. This one is also very good. Is the armor bullet combat power, which reduces the damage dealt by the enemy by 10%. Part 2 is going to be all about the individual details of the mechanics and their intrinsic connections with each other. There are 25 mechanics, or 37 if you count all the variations separately. Let's look at them one by one. The first mechanic is called Blade of Light. It is the basic attack of Zeriel and should be handled by the tank. This attack can crit and has a base damage ranging from 500,000 to about 1.1 million damage. In case of emergency, it is possible to iframe this mechanic, and Zeriel uses this in phases 1, 3 and 5. The next mechanic is a combination of armor break and judgment. First, Zeriel ducks down and stuns everyone who is in front of her. This should be only one of the tanks. Then, after a short delay, Zeriel will leap up and hit the person holding threat. In case this hits a stunned person, it will kill that person. So it is required here for the second tank to take over aggro once the first tank gets stunned. Even without armor break, this is a pretty heavy hit, hitting for up to 4.8 million damage. Zeriel uses this combination in phases 1, 3 and 5. The next mechanic is called Weight of Virtue. This mechanic basically is a check whether you should be doing this trial. It will hit everyone for up to 1.6 million damage. This mechanic is why this trial has such a high hit point requirement. There is no way to avoid the damage. Zeriel announces this mechanic by questioning whether you are worthy, followed by the blast. Make sure to be full HP and bring debuff artifacts and swarm mount powers in order to survive this mechanic. Zeriel uses this mechanic in phases 1, 3 and 5 and sometimes multiple in a row. Next up is Swordfall. A well-known red circle is placed around a couple of people and everyone inside the circle when it detonates gets up to 836,000 damage. 
These can stack, so make sure to take them out of the group. There are three variations of this mechanic. A variation where two people get a circle, four people get a circle, or even six people get a circle. In phase one, you can get the times two, times four, or times six. In phase three, only the times four or times six. And in phase five, you will only see the times four at this moment. You cannot avoid the damage, but if you are full HP, you should have no problem tanking one by yourself. The next mechanic is called Rain of Swords. A tether is connected to two people coming from an origin on the outside edge. If you are in a cluster of people, make sure to move around to see whether the tether is connected to you. After a brief delay, a shower of swords is cast in the direction in which the tether is facing. The people connected to the tether will get up to 1 million damage. So make sure once again that you are full HP and preferably have some kind of shield. Most important is not to aim the arrows at the group. And if possible also not at the second person with the second tether. Because getting hit twice typically will kill you. This mechanic will be used in phases 1, 3 and 5. The next mechanic, Tempest Wing, is one of the less damaging attacks, but it can push you off the platform. First, Zariel jumps off the platform into the sky where she disappears. At this moment, look around the edges of the platform. Zariel should be there doing one of two mechanics. Tempest Wing is when her wings are upright. This means you have to move close to her, because after a brief delay, this mechanic will push everyone back and do about 250,000 damage. After this mechanic, Zariel will disappear again and usually drop back down where she lifted off. There's one exception, which I will explain at a later stage. Zariel uses this mechanic in phases 1 and 3. The other mechanic Zariel can do after she lifted off the platform is called Great Divide. The indicator for this mechanic is that Zariel is at the edge, shining brightly. After a brief delay, she charges through the center of the platform. Make sure to stand as far as possible from her charge line. If you are away as far as possible, you will only take about 500,000 damage, whereas in the center you get about 4 million damage. This mechanic also will only happen in phases 1 and 3. The next mechanic is called Scathing Light. Scathing Light hits extremely hard for over 4.1 million damage, but the damage is spread across everyone who is hit. So if 8 people are hit, it still hits for 500,000 damage. It will hit 6 times with an approximate 1.5 second interval. You can see this mechanic by the 4 arrows inwards and one arrow on top of the head who's targeted. In case the person targeted dies, this mechanic will automatically jump to the next person. So make sure to huddle up. Then we get to Celestial Blade. This mechanic actually has four variants. What's the same in each variant is that portals will open at the edge and after a brief delay, straight light beams come out of those portals. Each beam does almost 700,000 damage. If you get hit, you get a damage over time debuff on your character that takes 7 times for 257,000 damage in a 3 second interval. It does not matter here if you get hit by one or multiple beams, the dot is always the same. The first variant is called the fan variant, which you can see here. The next variant is the parallel variant, which you can see here. The grid variant you can see here. Note that by looking at the center image, the outer corners, left front, right front, left back or right back, are always safe when you look at a straight angle with the beams. The last variant is runaround, or however you want to call it where the beams will make a 540 degrees rotation around the field and you have to walk along with the safe zone. The fan and parallel variants will only happen in phase 1. 
The grid variant will happen in phases 1 and 3, and the runaround variant will only happen in phase 3. The next mechanic is actually not an attack in itself, but only a debuff. It is quite a big debuff though. I'm talking about the mechanic Vulnerability Up. Some attacks, and I will mention which, will give you a Vulnerability Up debuff. This debuff increases your incoming damage by 25%, and this debuff stacks additively, meaning that two debuffs will increase your incoming damage by 50%, and three by 75, and so on. Seeing how high the damage values in this trial are, you do not want to get this debuff. Debuff stacks stay for 60 seconds, and you can get these debuffs in phases 1, 3, and 5. The first and most important mechanic that gives the vulnerability up debuff is Spreading Light. Spreading Light has four variations, but with each of them there are one or two locations where light beams drop down and then scatter outwards. Getting hit by one of the beams does about 900,000 damage and gives you a vulnerability up stack. As for the variations, we have the 1x4 variant, which you can see here. We have the 2x4 variant, which you can see here. We have the 1x8 variant, which you can see here. And the most extreme variant, the 2x8 variant, you can see here. For all variants, the easiest strategy to not get hit is to go into the center of one of the starting points after the first strike. However, due to mechanic combos and for tanks usually, this isn't always an option. Lily and Lightbringer analyzed the patterns and found some safe spots in the 2x8 variant, which you can see here. To find the safe spot, draw an H through the mechanic with the horizontal line of the H connecting the two starting points. Then all of the outside points of the H are your safe spots. The 1x4, 2x4 and 1x8 variations only happen in phase 1 and the 2x8 variant happens in phases 3 and 5. Then we get to two mechanics that I would like to combine because they are tightly linked together. I'm talking about Ant Helium and Parhelium. Ant Helium can be seen when balls are closely circling around Zerial, and Parhelium is when light sparks slowly lift upwards. For Ant Helium, the ring, you want to stand either very close to Zerial, the room inside the circle is safe, or far away from Zerial where it's also safe, but don't stand inside the ring of course. For Parhelium, you just need to be away from Zerial. You don't need to be away very far, but don't stand close. Both attacks do around 2.5 million damage and also both give you the vulnerability up debuff when you get hit. So you really don't want to get hit by this. Both mechanics come in a slow and in a fast variant. In the slow variant, you have time to see what Zerial does and react to the mechanic. The slow variant always comes first and is random. Then, after some other things have happened, she lands back on the location where she left it off after Anthelium or Parhelium, and there she will do the other mechanic, so the opposite, but then in the fast version. So here you need to know where to stand before Zeril has even landed. A good way to remember where Zeriel lifted off is by looking at the center face on the platform. There are two exceptions. 1. In the very first encounter of this mechanic set, she always does Ant Helium first, so the ring, and then Par Helium. The Par Helium in this case is also the slow variant, so you still have time to react there, or get in some sneaky damage. Two. In phase 1, if in between the mechanic set Zerial does a great divide mechanic, she will not land on the spot she lifted off, but instead land in the center of the platform and then do the opposite mechanic there. One more note, in phase 3, once you know which of the two 
mechanics comes first, in the following rotations the same mechanic will always come first. This mechanic set will happen in phases 1, 3 and 4. Then we get to Hollowed Slash. Hollowed Slash is an AoE attack that is aimed forward from Zarya. There are two variants. The variant in phases 1, 3 and 4 are 180 degree angles from Zarya's point of view. They have gaps in between them and is fairly slow to proc. You have a choice here to either get behind Zarya for some extra damage if you melee or stand inside the gaps. The variant in phase 5 is different in a lot of ways. First, the angle of the attack is slightly less than 180 degrees, it's about 150 degrees. Second, there are no gaps in the attacks. Third, it fires pretty quickly compared to the basic version. Fourth, it will not just fire once, but rotate clockwise around 0, 4, 6 procs. The last proc will not follow the clockwise rotation, but instead aim at the person with the most threat. This should be the tank, but to be sure, the DPS should not be doing damage while avoiding this mechanic. Also, the tank with aggro should not be inside the group when the last hit procs. The attack does about 1.3 million damage, so it could potentially wipe out most of the party. This mechanic happens in phases 1, 3, 4 and 5. Next up is another mechanic combo, Penance and Reprobation. Penance comes first in the form of either 4 or 8 small glowing fireballs on the platform. The idea is that each of the balls is covered by one or more people, within a short amount of time. At that point the penance balls explode for about 500,000 damage to everyone close to one of the balls. For each penance ball not covered, a reprobation penalty will be given to the whole team. This is 618,000 damage per ball not covered. The penance reprobation combo only happens in phase 3. Then we get to the first mechanic not done by Zeriel herself, Cleave. Cleave will happen as a basic attack of both shades in phase 2. Cleave is an AoE auto attack. As a DPS, you don't want to take these hits due to them having the possibility to crit. But in case of emergency, it is possible to iframe the hits. Also note that because there are two enemies here, it is possible for them to get combat advantage. So the tanks should obviously not stand in between the shades. The base damage of the attack is about 535,000 damage and this attack will only happen in phase 2. Next up is Icebreaker and Flamebreaker. Two more mechanics exclusive to phase 2. Approximately every 25 seconds, the shades both will perform an overhead strike on their target, which does up to 4.2 million damage. This damage cannot be iframed, so tanks, make sure to keep aggro. After being hit, both tanks will have a debuff representing the shade they were fighting with, or the shade that hit them. So the Shade of Ice will give the Icebreaker debuff and the Shade of Fire will give the Flamebreaker debuff. With the debuff, any further attacks from that same Shade will do 5 times as much damage. As you can imagine, this is not manageable. Which means that after these Breaker attacks, the tanks need to swap Shades. As mentioned, this only happens in Phase 2. We're staying in Phase 2 because you probably also noticed the purple balls flying around. These balls are the despair mechanic. Despair balls spawn continuously, but more will spawn if multiple people get hit by a shade. The despair balls fly towards the center of the platform, where they will drain a part of the hope bar. If the hope bar is empty, the run will is a fail, so we don't want this to happen. Instead of letting them fly to the center, People can also intercept them by walking into the balls. 
This will remove the balls from play, but it will do some damage to the players, as well as give them a despair stack. Despair stacks will increase the damage of following despair balls, so make sure to not take too many at once. The first ball does 386,000 damage, and per stack the damage is increased by about 260,000. The stacks will disappear after a couple of seconds, and this will of course only happen in phase 2. Next up is the last phase 2 exclusive mechanic, which is called Outer Conflict. Outer Conflict ticks for a small amount of damage every 3 seconds and everyone gets hit. The damage in itself is very tiny, up to about 80,000 damage, but this mechanic does remove the benefit of your bark shield, so keep that in mind. Of course, this only happens in phase 2. Next up are two phase 4 exclusive mechanics. The first one is called Sword Slash. Sword Slash is the basic attack of the two angels that spawn in phase 4. The base damage of this attack goes up to about 1.2 million. Again, because there are two angels, it is possible for them to get combat advantage. And this attack can also crit. That's not all though. When the angels get close together, they get a buff that multiplies their damage by 5. So make sure to pull them apart right from the start. The second phase 4 exclusive mechanic, and the last mechanic of this video, is called Celestial Armory. This is the attack that Zeriel charges up while you are fighting the two angels. You can see the charging process to the right. You have about 1 minute to beat the angels, or this mechanic will be fully charged, which will wipe the party, and you have to start over. If you beat the angels before the bar is fully charged, this mechanic will do damage based on how full the bar is. If the bar is almost full, this mechanic will do about 2 million damage. If you die with the bar not completely full, you can scroll back to life. Alright, part 3 of the Zerial's challenge guide. I assume that you guys all know the mechanics now, because that's all in part 2. So we're not going to look at the mechanics anymore, we're not going to visually see them, but we're just going to talk about them as if you're super familiar with them. In this part, I will only be looking at two spreadsheets. Um, one here with uh, an overview of the mechanics and one that I made every 100 milliseconds to see whether a mechanic is going on, to see how long they take and when they hit and so here I can see everything. I can also see when to use mechanics and when it's uh, back off cooldown. So in here is all of the strategy and it's also a little bit summarized here. So um, this is phase one and we'll be going to the other phases real soon. Phase one starts with a couple of blade of lies as you can see and then immediately the way the virtue mechanic uh, Weight of Virtue, as we know, does a lot of damage, so you want to use your um, artifacts immediately here on this Weight of Virtue to debuff the damage a bit. It's also here, um, immediately on the first big mechanic, you want to use the artifacts to debuff the damage, so it's a little bit easier to survive. Then after Weight of Virtue hits, we get Swordfall, which is the red circles. Um, here you can see it's the times 2 version, so it's not that you get Swordfall twice. This means that it's the two circles, so two people get one circle, um, so they have to split from the group. Then we get an armor break plus judgment a little bit later, uh, all by itself, so uh, no other mechanics to dodge here at the same time, so this is pretty easy. Then quite a bit later, I think it's like 8 seconds, let me see. Yeah, it's 7.7 .7 seconds later we get Celestial Blades. So this is the first time you get this mechanic and it's the fan variant. Um, very often I've noticed it's at the back. So for the DPS, uh, make sure to look behind you after this judgment. At least about 7 seconds uh, after this judgment you have to look behind you because there's going to be a Celestial Blade. 
all still solo mechanics, nothing at the same time. Then Reign of Swords, first time two people get a tether, so they have to split from the group. Again, nothing at the same time. Um, shortly after the Reign of Swords hits, we get Anthelium. Uh, as I said, this is the slow one, so this one takes about six seconds. Yeah, six seconds to pop. After you first see it, this is the ring. Uh, so if you've gotten the Reign of Swords, you still have plenty of time to get to um, Zerial here. Then we get Hallowed Slash um, facing towards the tank, so this is basically just keep attacking. Then we get Spreading Light. Um, spreading Light 1 times 4 and this is also a good moment again to use artifacts uh, because they just got off cooldown here as you can see and if you know where the spreading light hits it's an easy one it's a 1 times 4 so here you can also use the opportunity to put um, some damage on Zeriel if you position her in the right spot but make sure that you're not in a location where the spreading light will um, go to so make sure you're in a safe spot for this so during Spreading Light, we get uh, a Judgment here, Armor Break plus Judgment, uh, while the Spreading Light is going on. So this is another reason why the tanks should, um, once they see the Spreading Light, move to a position where the Spreading Light will not go to, and then uh, tank Zerial there. So when Judgment happens, the tanks will not be caught out by the Spreading Light. And the DPS can of course continue doing damage. Uh, then after the spreading light and judgment, uh, Zarya will disappear. She will do uh, always a great divide here. So this is not a selection jet. We're here at number 10. She will also do a great divide. Um, and then when she pops down, she's back on the location where she uh, lifted off. So here she lifts off. And in this Parhelion, uh, she does where she comes down again. And this again... As I said before, the first one is always a slow variant, so also this one takes 6 seconds. So if you're here against Zeriel, you can still do a little bit of damage before you have to uh, get out of there. Because you don't want to get hit by this. Um, after Pahelion is over, she will, uh, you will get a Scathing Light, so you have to group up, uh, because this does a lot of damage. It takes a long time and close to the end of Scathing Light you get Celestial Blade again. This is the parallel version. It's a little bit annoying because Scathing Light means you need to group up but the Celestial Blade means that you maybe need to get out of there but it's only one more hit. Uh, but still if you have the if you're targeted by Scathing Light make sure that you're still in a group here. Uh, Celestial Blade actually only hits here so you still have after the last hit four seconds to get to a safe position. So it's, it's plenty. So actually at the end of Scathing Light, uh, after the hits the last time, so that's when uh, Celestial Blade pops up, after that um, make sure to move into a safe spot. Here you can see someone got the debuff, they got hit. Um, then it's the first time where we get multiple mechanics at once. Um, first people get targeted by Reign of Swords. Uh, so they need to move uh, apart. Then also sword fall happens with the um, uh, red circles. It's at the same time. And then also armor break in judgment happens. So make sure that to move these all in separate positions. Um, Reign of swords should be all the way at the edge. Sword fall, make sure to not hit the Reign of swords guys because they will die. Reign of swords does a lot of damage and it cannot be dodged. So if you get, uh, if, um, well actually Reign of Swords hits first, so they can be healed uh, in between. But if you hit someone who got hit by Reign of Swords or the other way around, you should not be hit by both of them. Uh, so make sure to find some free room. And of course the Judgment uh, will hit slightly after. Make sure to not hit the tank that's going to take this Judgment hit. Uh, by any of those mechanics because uh, they need all the HP they uh, can get. Let's see, after this combination, um, here is also a good moment after the Reign of Swords happens to do artifact calls again uh, because the Swordfall you can get to um, Zeriok very quickly. 
after this. And uh, there's actually a little bit of room here to do some damage. Hallowed Slash should be facing the tank, so there's no issue doing DPS. There's a nice spot here to do some uh, artifact damage. Make sure to not do your um, Griffins and Wyvern uh, coated knives, by the way, because uh, here you get the combination of weight of virtue and spreading light, 1 times 8. Uh, hit this one you need to try to debuff as much as possible because Weight of Virtue does a lot of damage. So here you want to use a Griffin, possibly, and uh, if you have also Wyvern Knives, don't use them here. Bad idea. And uh, here what I usually do, because it's totally safe, is after spreading light hits the first time, which is uh, somewhere here I think, I'm not sure, because nobody got hit, which is good. Uh, move into the center of this spreading light because you will be, you'll be totally safe there uh, There's no sword fall or other mechanic going on at the same time. It will come later But uh, here in the center you will not be hit anymore by anything So move to the center of the spreading light when you get these two uh, combined And you will get the big hit and briefly afterwards you get a uh, sword fall on eight people so here it's also, uh, this is also why this is good. If you all move to the center of the spreading light, the healers can use one AOE to immediately after Weight of Virtue heal everyone up because everyone will be hit by the Swordful mechanic and you want to be full HP again once you get that. Spreading light takes a long time. Uh, near the end of spreading light you get a judgment again with arm break and then it's actually a long time that there's nothing. And then we get a nice combination again. We get Celestial Blade, uh, and this is the fan one, so the spread out one. Um, and about halfway in, we also get two Reign of Swords, which will actually hit quite a bit later. Uh, it's about three seconds later. So make sure to dodge the fan first, the Celestial Blade, and then um, make sure to uh, Position these Reign of Swords in a good place. They are a little bit shifted for some reason. I don't know if it's lag or something else, but for me they were quite a bit shifted if I looked into the data. But yeah, doesn't really matter that much. Um, then after this combination we get a Hallowed Slash immediately following the Reign of Swords. Um, which should be aimed at the tank again. And then Zariel jumps back here somewhere after she hit the Hallowed Slash. And then she does another one. So here's the moment where you can, um, when she jumps away, start moving backwards. She jumps off uh, behind the DPS. And there you can continue doing damage. Especially if you're melee, you want to be behind her. Um, and then we get the first choice. So here we have either Anthelium, which is the ring, or we get Parhelion, where you have to go away. In this case it was Antilium. The first one, as I mentioned in the mechanics, is always a slow one, which takes about 6 seconds. Um, and then she jumps off the platform, does a, either a Great Divide or a Tempest Wing. In this case it was a Great Divide. And then she comes back down and she does the fast version of the opposite mechanic. Because she did a Great Divide, she will jump into the middle. And this Parhelium will, uh, will be going off quickly in the middle. It's uh, about one second for the quick version. After she's down and she did the quick version, you can immediately pop the um, artifacts again and move all to the center of the platform. Why is this important? It's because of this spreading light. Spreading light will never hit the middle of the platform if you have the 2 times 4 variant. So it's actually a safe spot in the middle and if you're standing there, then the tank that gets targeted by armor break has no chance of getting stunned and having no way to um, avoid the spreading light anymore. So always move to the center here. It's actually uh, after 24, before 25. Move to the center and there use artifacts. Spreading light takes a long time again. And near the end we get also a sword fall mechanic here which have to move away, and then also Reign of Swords, which is uh, triggering quite a bit later. 
Then we get another Reign of Swords and a Scathing Light. So the Reign of Swords people, that does two, they have to move away. So you have in total eight people left, one tank, seven people that can be standing at the same spot here while Scathing Light is going on. Scathing Light also takes a long time. Uh, after these have procced uh, the, the damage, make sure to get healed and then join the other seven people with the Scathing Light because a little bit later you get two Reign of Swords again. So the two people have to again split from the group uh, and there will be seven left. Uh, for the people that leave with Reign of Swords, it's very important for the healers to make sure that they leave with full HP. They will be getting hit by Scathing Light all the time, so it might be that they're not full HP. And it's very important that they are when they leave the group. Then, um, quite a bit of nothing again. A couple of basic attacks and then we get one more loose judgment. Uh, separate judgment. And I think after that I don't have anything uh, in my data anymore. There are some more mechanics here that I'm not sure about just yet because typically we uh, face about here. Uh, so it shouldn't be too important what is after that. What, what you should know is that once you reach 50% and I guess we reach it about here, Zeriel uh, jumps off again and she does a great divide which takes a bit, so make sure to look around once you're at 50%. Uh, one more thing to note, um, the 50% should preferably not happen while you get or you're very close to scathing light because uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky to move the whole group to the side at the same time to dodge this great divide. Uh, it's much better to do it um, on judgment because if Zeriel is doing this judgment, she needs to be physically there. And if you face her here, that means that she will do the Great Divide actually afterwards. It will actually be at the same moment as here, but you will have plenty of time to move, move aside after the great, uh, for the Great Divide. So that's all I got of phase one uh, and all the strategies. So now we get to phase Two, uh, as you can see, phase two is much simpler and every, every phase actually is a lot simpler than phase one. Phase one is very, very long. Uh, and phase two, the shades, the two demons, they will just cleave for 25 seconds and then do this uh, breaker attack, the ice of flame breaker, and then you need to tank swap and then they will do cleave again. Uh, actually, for the first time, the timer of 25 seconds starts a little bit earlier uh, let me see. Yeah, here it's actually 14 seconds for the first one, but all after that are actually 25 seconds or a little bit less than 25, 24 and a half or something like that. You can see the cleaves here and auto conflict hits every three seconds. So you can see count is 30 and every, um, 30, uh, every three seconds out of conflict will hit. Uh, and the spares here are just uh, people picking up the balls. That, that's actually basically it for phase two. Uh, there's not much strategy there except for this tank swap, which you need to uh, do properly. Um, make sure to not get hit uh, once you leave your first, uh, the other shade because they will hit for five times the damage and also make sure to not stand in between the shades when you're swapping because they will have a uh, combat advantage. Then phase three. Uh, phase three is actually, in my opinion, the most difficult phase of the trial. Um, if phase four is manageable, but it should be. Um, it starts off with twice weight of virtue. You can see it here. There's no timer towards it, but there's, there's one that she announces. And then we have another way to virtue here, uh, about seven seconds apart typically. Yeah, 7.3 seconds apart. So quite some time in between. Um, if you can, make sure to do your debuffs uh, at the end or very close to when the way to virtue hits, because that will mean that the artifacts, the debuffs will actually still be going 
uh, once the second wave of virtue uh, hits and then you will have more uh, damage debuffs here. After that, eight people will get a sword fall, so make sure to spread out. Uh, only two people don't have one, so always spread out. Uh, and then we get a judgment. And um, it's, it's a solo judgment, so nothing else is going on. So this is a very easy one. Uh, this is actually here for when you're not in the first cycle. So from the second cycle on, this is actually a good moment to do your artifacts because you have after sword for quite some time to do damage. It takes a long time before the next thing happens. Then after some uh, time, and we will see that later on as well, be uh, because we're going back to um, one at some point. Then after a big wait time, after judgment, we get a Reign of Swords and Hallowed Slash. Um, actually, Reign of Swords procs first, so first two people get a tether. Uh, and Hallowed Slash will actually limit the room where they can move. If needed, you can always move in between the red lines of Hallowed Slash to move your Reign of Swords there. But you typically have enough room to place the Reign of Swords so that it doesn't hit anyone. Make sure to also not hit the tank, by the way. Um, important to make sure that you have enough room is to tank this, uh, to tank Zarya a little bit towards the edge so that there's not, not too much room behind the tank uh, because that makes, that makes Hallowed Slash uh, a lot smaller. Then we got a couple seconds of nothing again. She actually, um, after this combination of Reign of Swords and Hallowed Slash, she jumps behind the DPS again where she does another Hallowed Slash. So once again, if you're melee, make sure to, during this combo, move behind uh, your fellow DPS or uh, yeah f behind the DPS and there she will uh, we will be able to melee some extra damage in there then a little bit later she will do a choice of ant helium or pal helium this will be the slow one again because this is the first one it's again six seconds um, ant helium is the ring so you can keep standing there with the pal helium you have to go away uh, and interesting to note is that here you can see that Ant Helium was picked first and you will see that with every cycle and I think we have two or three cycles you will see that Ant Helium will always be picked here first because this was the choice that was made when this first happened. Um, it can also be that Par Helium will be done for all the cycles. It's just what, whichever you see is going to be the one that you always get first here. So after this uh, mechanic, and in this case, she will jump up in the air again, um, and then you will get the celestial blade where you have to make run uh, in a 540 degree circle. So you have to run around one and a half times, uh, don't get hit by the celestial blade. And then she will uh, do either a great divide or a tempest wing. And after that, she will come back down to the location where she lifted off after this ant helium or par helium where she will do the quick opposite version in this case par helium um, if you want to know where she's going to land make sure to look where she's doing this mechanic this ant helium where she's standing um, when looking at the face in the middle uh, we usually look at is she at the, above the face below the face to the left or to the right and then, then you can know, okay, there she's going to come back because this mechanic will mess up your orientation and uh, you will not know where to go. So the face is a very good indicator to see where she was. Some people also use the door uh, where you came onto the platform, because, but in my opinion, the face is even easier than that. So there she drops down. It's very important to know where she's going to be and what she's doing because you don't want to stand in this attack and you don't have the time to respond. It's just one second and then it hits. So right after this fast mechanic, you get a penance with uh, four balls. At this moment, you can also use artifacts because the tanks and the healers can tank this penance. And the DPS can just uh, go ham on uh, Zeriel. Zeriel will also, at the end of Penance, start uh, Armor Break and Judgment. So um, one of the tanks will get uh, stunned. 
after Pendant's hits, the healers make sure to heal up your tank that's going to tank this uh, Judgment, and then they will take it here. Let's see, then we get a Spreading Light. This is the 2x8 version, so this is the one that's uh, pretty hardcore. Uh, it actually lights up quite uh, long before. And then at some point here you can see, this, I think this is the first hit, and someone got hit here. Um, and straight afterwards you get, uh, after the first hit, Swordful will actually pop up. Uh, so make sure to, while spreading light is going on, it will limit, of course, your freedom on the platform. But make sure to try and split up the Swordful. It's a times four, so four people will have a uh, red circle. And they shouldn't be on the same spot. So uh, if you overlap them, it can be lethal. While Swordful is going on, also people will get Rain of Swords. Um, make sure to not get hit by Swordful or by Spreading Light, but uh, you, you don't have to rush into going to the edge, because after Swordful hits, you still have about 4 seconds until the Rain of Swords actually procs. So uh, here, make sure first of all to miss the Spreading Light. I typically go to the center of one of the 1x8. 2 times 8 is there. Then the Swordfall, make sure to spread spread them out and then the Rain of Swords is afterwards important to not get hit by them. Let's see, then we get uh, yet another Rain of Swords which uh, targets two people and then we get another very long Scathing Light. And while Scathing Light is going on we get two more Rain of Swords. They proc separate again. This is more than a second apart. 1.1 seconds, so I don't know why this is, uh, might be to make people have to look twice to make sure that they don't have to uh, tether, but yeah, make sure to not get out of the scathing light for too long to check whether you have to tether and you have to really go away, because scathing light should be tanked by as many as possible people. After this has happened, the super long scathing light, we get another penance, but this time it's the penance times 8. And um, when penance has been, uh, the penance balls have been visible for 3.6 seconds, Zero will also do an armor break in judgment. So uh, during this penance, uh, the tanks also have to take over aggro. This can be a little bit complicated if you don't have a ranged aggro. But uh, we have 8 pennants, so in theory one tank sh could stay off the pennants balls. They should be taken by the DPS and healers, uh, if possible. So the tanks can uh, take care of this here. After pennants times 8, you can also use the artifacts here, because we have quite a bit of time where there's nothing going on. It's all free time, so after this pennants times 8 and the judgment, Use your offense artifacts. This is very important. Don't use all artifacts, only the offense artifacts, because you're going to use your uh, def uh, defensive artifacts a little bit later. So here we get another Celestial Blade. This is the grid variant. Um, in the mechanics, I showed you how to easily avoid that, but you have to move away from Zeriel if you're, uh, uh, well, melee and the uh, range both, I guess. But yeah. There are some safe spots you can go to. Um, make sure to do that. It's only grid, so there's nothing else, else going on here. Then we have a couple seconds of nothing again, about three and a half, and then we get another spreading light, two times eight, and the sword fall again. Um, and actually, after sword fall uh, hits, you get the start of uh, the rotation again. And here, you want to use your Wyverns and Swarms again. Make sure to use them approximately at the end of Way of Virtue so you also pick up the debuff for the second one. Don't use it directly at the start, but use it a little bit later. So the second Way of Virtue does less damage. And then we start from the start again. We have a Swordfall again. Uh, we can go through this again. Um, actually, Way of Virtue, Swordfall, I will break judgments. And then as soon as um, the 
artifacts are off cooldown, make sure to use the offense artifacts here. And then we get the rest. Uh, so let's leave it at that here. Then we are at phase 4. Uh, phase 4 actually has no cycles because it's just one, uh, one times going through this here. And you should be done, otherwise uh, you, will, you will die. <laughs> it starts off with 14 seconds of, hello, of Sword Slash. So that's the basic attack of the Angels. Um, then you get a Hallowed Slash, the normal one that you also had in the previous phases. Then another second, 9 seconds of Sword Slash, and then Harrowman will do the ring. And Olanthius will do the uh, mechanic where you have to not be close to, um, not, not close to him. Um, what the strategy is that works best here, in my opinion, is to start at Harrowman. You have about 30 seconds, so half of the time of the phase, which is about one minute, to get him down to about 20-25%, maybe a little bit, yeah, about 20%, I guess. At 10% they, uh, they disappear. Get him down to 20% here, then swap to Alantius uh, and use artifacts on him. So you can burst him down faster than in 30 seconds. Uh, there will be another 9 seconds of auto attack. Hallowed Slash and another 9 seconds. You have 18, 18 seconds here to uh, to get him down and also, I guess, also the ring that will be on Olanthia's second. Um, Harrowman should be as good as dead here. Uh, if he's not dead, after uh, Harrowman did the spar healing, you have 5 seconds to burst down the rest. Uh, if you don't make it in this 5 seconds, uh, Celestial Armory will kill you. One more thing to note, I already mentioned in the mechanics that if Harriman and Olanthius are close together, their damage is increased five times, so that their uh, sword slash damage is a lot higher. Um, make sure to pull them apart. And also, once one of the angels is gone, they will take only 25% of the incoming damage, so they will be super tanky. And also, um, their damage will increase again by a factor of five. So they will get super angry. The good thing is that if one of the angels is gone, the other angel will not move anymore. So the tank should uh, disengage from the angel. Make sure to get out of there because he will kill you. And then uh, also keep aggro on the angel to make sure that the DPS can finish off the job if necessary. It should be super close because once again, you only do 25% of the damage. If uh, the other angel has too much health left, you will just not make it. And then we get to phase 5. Uh, phase 5, first cycle, starts with 3 times Weight of Virtue. Make sure to once again debuff them, uh, use Wyvern Swarms, debuff powers to survive this. Uh, this is directly after uh, Celestial Armory hits, which also hits for quite a lot. If you go down, make sure to not pick yourself up too fast, uh, because these can also knock you down again. If you've gone down, use uh, a Caprice as food to make sure to survive these hits um, because they hit quite hard. There's about 7 seconds in between these weight virtues. The first time, as I said, it's 3 and every other cycle this is increased by 1. So the second cycle we have 4 times weight of virtue, the third cycle 5 times, etc. This will just increase every time. Um, if you have offense artifacts, use them also at this moment because Sari will be just be standing still. As long as you survive, this is a good moment to just do damage. Nothing much will be happening here where you have to dodge stuff. It's just surviving the hits. So after the way the virtue spam, you have a little bit of time, more to do damage, and then spreading light happens. Um, this spreading light is a 2 times 8 variant again, as you can see to the right, and 4 people will get swordfall. Um, it's important here that uh, you get to the center of the platform as quickly as possible. So make sure that as many as possible people get into the centers of the 2x8 uh, spreading lights. And people who have Swordfall, make sure to find the free spot where you can uh, uh, let it hit you. Uh, make sure to not overlap because that will kill someone. Um, but yeah, after swordful make sure to get into the center where it will be safe at this point so at the center 
Uh, Reign of Sword should be taken out then, while everyone is still at the center. Uh, the Reign of Sword should go to the edge, because then we get Scathing Light, which will hit everyone, except for the two people with the Reign of Swords, of course. But the Scathing Light should be um, where everyone is, and if you're spread out too much because of the Spreading Light, it's gonna be very difficult to tank this, everyone will die. So while Scathing Light is going on, the Spreading Light finishes, uh, and the Reign of Swords hits, and then we get another Reign of Swords. Again, two people should disengage from the Scathing Light, everyone else stick together. Then after Scathing Light finishes, we get another Armor Breaker and Judgment, all by itself, so not that tricky. And then we get another sword full times four, and this is where the special um, hallowed slash happens. Right after the sword fall, she will do the hallowed slash six times. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer than the normal one, which takes 3.2 seconds, I think, and this one 8.6. She will um, hit this one six times, uh, ro clockwise rotation, and the last one will be aimed at the tank. Uh, after this hits, actually before, it hits. Actually, Zero will already have announced a way to virtue, and this is the start of the first mechanic again. And as I said, the first time is three, and here you will see oh, and here you will see that it's one, two, three, four before we go back to the normal auto attacks. Um, let's see, and then we get exactly the same again. We get the spreading light and the sword fall and the Reign of Swords, and we get Scathing Light again. So make sure that uh, with this Spreading Light, you get to the center of uh, the map here, as quickly as possible, here. And then two people who have Reign of Swords go out, because Scathing Light should be tanked by everyone together. So this is the same as, as you saw before. We have the Solo Judgment and the Sword full times four again, and then we get the Hallowed Slash again. And then we get Weight of Virtue five times. I don't know if it's in here. We have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we still have one more cycle, etc. It's just um, going to continue like that. So that completes all of the rotations. I hope this helps. I've tried to make this guide as complete as possible. If you have any remarks on this guide, let me know. If you have any remarks in this video or any suggestions on what to investigate next, feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.